Back for more, I see. The horror short is a magical thing, don't you think? There's so much potential for terror in a tight, infinitely rewatchable package. Oftentimes, horror shorts manage to be much scarier than feature-length endeavors. Some ideas don't need to be stretched out to 90 minutes through characterization and multiple acts. Sometimes a premise and some slick execution is all you need. The swiftness can add a sense of urgency and dread, too. So without further ado, let's talk about some odd, odd entries into the horrorverse. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be talking about the Top 5 Weirdest Horror Short Films Part 2. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more tantalizing tidbits. Perfect. Let's get to it. Coming in at number 5, we've got Still Life. Anyone ever get the heebie-jeebies walking by mannequins? There's something about those dead, uncaring eyes that really gets me. Even if I know they're standing perfectly still, there's always that nagging feeling that they're following your every motion. It all feels a little uncanny valley-like, doesn't it? Still Life takes that feeling and dials it up to 10 with some added layers of fun. We open on a desolate, wintry road. A man, pumped up on coffee and unknown pills, is doing his best to complete his road trip without falling asleep at the wheel. He zones out and only comes back to reality when his tank runs dry. Pulling into a small town, he is struck by the stoic nature of the locals. Is that a mannequin on the bench? Unfortunately, he doesn't have too much time to investigate. Paying attention to the sidewalk instead of the road proves to be a bad call and he runs over something or someone. Behind his car, all smashed up, is a fully dressed mannequin. At first, all the man can do is feel bewildered, but things take a real turn for the worse once he realizes that everyone in town is a mannequin. Check it out. Thus begins a very strange game of cat and mouse, with the poor pill-popping fellow being pursued through town by mannequins that only move when they're out of his sight line. It feels like something out of an SCP entry, to be honest. The camera work really sells his panic as he hustles through the unfamiliar town, encountering mannequin after creepy mannequin. He hides out in an unlocked house, only to discover that a family of mannequins live there. Mama mannequin, Papa mannequin, and little Bobby mannequin. With the police closing in and the family of fashionable dolls starting to act aggressively, he panics. The dread that still life manages to extract from a pretty wild scenario is impressive, and the twist ending makes your stomach drop. What would you do in a situation like this? Coming in at number four, we've got too many cooks. Adult Swim has been putting out top-notch surrealist horror shorts for years. What started off as a weird series of flicks meant to be broadcast either late at night or early in the morning, depending on your constitution, blossomed into a buffet of cult hits on YouTube. They really found an audience with this method of distribution and put plenty of up-and-coming filmmakers on the map. Many creatives managed to hit it big there with folks like Alan Resnick and Jack Stauber finding a home before setting off on other independent ventures. Some of the content can be considered psychedelic or trippy, while other stuff might be seen as objectively terrifying and unsettling. Unedited footage of a bear, anyone. But the short that stuck with me the most, and apparently a lot of other people too, is Too Many Cooks. This is an 11 minute masterpiece that gets better and better upon repeat watches. And please don't go out and watch any of the Too Many Cooks Explained YouTube videos. Just hit watch again and take the ride another time. Maybe invite some friends over to watch it on loop until the food runs out. Kicking off with some pretty goofy sitcom stereotypes, we meet a colorful cast of characters. Each actor smiles towards the camera after performing some inane action and their name appears in bright yellow letters. You know, like this. It goes on for what feels like a little too long as we meet multiple sets of ensembles. Moms, dads, kids, neighbors, grandparents, and more. Hell, there's even a puppet named Smurf. Just when you think they've exhausted every possible scenario, it switches genres. We meet chefs, police, firefighters, sorority sisters, murderous lunatics. Wait. Who was that guy with the beard in the background? Ah oh, well, it was probably nothing. It keeps going and going, with the theme song repeating and adding new platitudes along the way. It's infectious, bordering on obnoxious, but it won't last forever. In amongst the countless pop culture parodies, there's something sinister happening. We meet G.I. Joe knockoffs, West Wing knockoffs, even Star Trek knockoffs, but none of them have an answer for the brutal killings that keep taking place. Yeah, so as it turns out, there's a psychopath in the midst of all the stock characters, and he's picking them off one by one. And to be honest, that's not even the most upsetting part. Go watch it and feel like your brain is falling apart, and then come back and let me know who your favorite character is. I'm a Gwydion Lashley Walton fan myself. Coming in at number three, we've got No Through Road. Skeleton. Brim Hall Farm was in the news. I don't know what it was, I can't remember. Have you ever seen this song? Uh, it gives me the sh so badly. This short right here is proof that anyone can make horror on any budget, given that they have the motivation to do so. 
A squad of goofy British teens dropped this short back in 2009, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if any of them started working in film. It's a startlingly effective little found footage number, complete with quick, glitchy cut-ins of other footage from these guys' lives. The fearsome foursome is on a little late-night joyride, seemingly on a weeknight. They've got some candy, they've got some beer, and they're just having a good time. At first, they're just goofing around, making fun of each other and joking about switching the headlights on and off. Soon, they make it to a creepy little archway with a sign labeled No Through Road. Someone remarks that a nearby farm has been on the news, but they can't remember why. The general consensus in the car is that the arch is creepy and they should put it in reverse ASAP. But something changes after leaving the archway. They drive for hours without encountering another car. The same two signs keep showing up, indicating that they're making it nowhere. After a quick pee break, one of the lads rushes back to the car in a froth, convinced that he saw a man in a mask out in the field. All the while, little flashes of these friends' lives pop in and out. Naturally, the boys are feeling pretty freaked out, so they decide to turn on the radio to calm their nerves. Add call as the tunes on the airwaves that day are terrible and terrifying. I'll leave it at that because let's be real, you should go watch No Through Road right now. Coming in at number two, we've got Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. This is another horror short in the vein of Too Many Cooks, one that presents itself as something harmless and fun and then devolves into a nightmare. There are many entries in the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series. I think they've made six at this point. Apparently they're getting a TV show too. Each is worth a watcher's seven. First to let the fun colors and objective terror wash over you and then again to try and pick up all the little details. We'll talk about the original entry as it is a good jumping off point for new viewers and a fun rewatch for those familiar with the series. We open on a kitchen scene populated by three puppets. There's a yellow humanoid with blue hair and overalls. There's a green round-headed bird and a red mop-like creature. They sit around, bored and lazy, until their sentient notebook shocks them out of their collective apathy. This googly-eyed paper pusher bounces through the kitchen and sings a song about creativity. Initially, it's a jolly good time, with the three puppets participating in the different arts and crafts that Mr. Notebook suggests. Over time, the notebook starts acting more aggressively and seems to be actively seeking to make the puppets feel uncomfortable. The song takes on a frantic quality after a while, and everyone's actions match the crazy pace. Our lovable puppets start doing some very unpuppety stuff, and it becomes very apparent that this is not a program meant for children. You might want to take a deep breath before heading into this one. And finally, at number one, we've got Possibly in Michigan. Masked mannequin men, cannibalism, and a focus on perfume all come together in the fever dream known as Possibly in Michigan. Created by Cecilia Condit back in the 80s, this is a genuinely disturbing account of a man obsessed with consuming women and the two friends who turn that desire back on him. Shot on a low budget, the short makes use of plenty of practical effects, pictures within pictures, and more to make it feel really off kilter. Throughout the story, information will be delivered in the form of song, but these songs seem largely unstructured. Jangly keyboards accentuate these strange in and out harmonies sung by the flick's three characters. They voice their desires, often violent in this musical manner, making for a mesmerizing, if not manic, watch. To call possibly in Michigan weird would be an understatement, but to dismiss it as only strange would be a grave mischaracterization. It seems that this is quite the personal story to the director, who's possibly trying trying to shine some light on the obsessive and violent nature of men she's encountered. To make a whole experimental horror film on this premise, in the 80s no less, is a commendable achievement. I bite at the hand that feeds me, slap at the face that eats me. Some kind of animal, cannibal. Did I meet the weirdness quota? Are the odd meters at acceptable levels? A lot of horror plays it too straight, the weirdness is where the good stuff is. So what did you think of the list? Had you seen all these before? Which is your favorite? What's the weirdest horror short you've ever seen? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more exasperated ones from the top five scary Trevor Henderson creatures. The Mad Husher says, Naked Eye. How do you know my eye is naked? My eye is a lady. She would never parade around in just her underoos. Okay, sure, that eye is prim and proper, but what about your other one? I heard it ran away and joined a nudist commune. Ixer6 says the problem with the smile room is that they didn't burn down the amusement park after finding it. It's the only sane thing to do. Hey man, people in Oshawa got a bowl. I think the fallout from Nebs being burned down would be greater than letting the smile room proliferate. Spike Boy the Stick Man says, what if a portal opened up to Trevor Henderson's monsters and they invaded Earth? What would we do? Oh, well, they're already here. Good luck. And August Patates says, Okay, I know you showed their real face and they're dangerous, but I still want to hug a bridge worm. You are a much braver person than me, August. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I go swimming with sharks after a barbecue dinner, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more outlandish oddities. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.